started noticing something in common with the people who were experiencing more ease, flow, more abundance, better relationships in their lives, compared to the people whose lives just seem, they seem to be a little bit tougher, they had a little bit more chaos in their relationships and their work life was a little bit more stressful or a lot more stressful. When I discovered that when I started practicing this, the thing that, that the people having the success have in common, I found that I found more ease, confidence in my life. When I look back at the times when I experienced the most distress, chaos, and stress in my life, and unease in my life, my relationships, my work life, my career, and also my health. It's because I wasn't using this practice. And this is a very important practice to guide you and anchor you in your life so you can have prosperity in all areas of your life. Most people are not taught how to use it. So the practice that I'm sharing with you is about having healthy boundaries in your life. I know, don't roll your eyes at me. Healthy boundaries, ah. I heard that term for years and I really didn't fully understand it. I, I thought that that meant that you say no to people all the time and you're mean and you're selfish and you're only thinking about yourself. And we're always taught, don't be selfish. Don't, don't just think about yourself, think about other people. And while that's true to do that, what I've learned is that we have to think about ourselves first before we can help other people. And that doesn't mean that we're not helpful, but you have to be in a place where you're healthy and secure and grounded in order to help someone else. So you can only do that by practicing healthy boundaries, having healthy boundaries in your life. Having healthy boundaries in your life is actually, it's kind. It's kind to yourself, it's kind to others because they know exactly where they stand with you. So when you are practicing using healthy boundaries, so many other things change in your life. One, you develop a strong sense of self. You do, you, you feel more grounded, more confident in who you are. People have more respect for you. They have more respect for your ability to put your own needs and your own health first because that's what you're here to do. You're here to expand your own consciousness. And only by doing that can you actually help others do the same. So you also have a lot less anxiety in your life. You have less anxiety because you're not being pulled by other people, you're not being pulled by, by circumstances and, and trying to fix other people and fill their needs. Now, I'm not saying that when you're a parent, sometimes you have to be pulled by your kids' needs. Sometimes your baby needs to eat. <laughs> but what happens is, it, having healthy boundaries always creates, it actually creates closer relationships because people know exactly where they stand. They have respect for you. There's a lot more ease in the relationship. Your relationships will be closer if no one is controlling each other. You know, it's not your fault if you have not been practicing healthy boundaries. Most people are not taught healthy boundaries growing up. They're taught to make other people happy, make your parents happy, make your friends happy, make your teachers happy, make all these people happy so you're accepted. And when we're a child, we have to be accepted. That is survival. We can't survive on our own. We have to be accepted. So it's an ingrained process to be accepted. So you didn't create your unhealthy boundary situation. That was a learned practice. And 
And, and let me tell you, it's an epidemic here on planet Earth. It's an epidemic. You're taught that, but it is your job now to learn how to create healthy boundaries. If you want more ease, if you want a more prosperous life in your relationships, in your work, in every aspect of your life. Yes, healthy boundaries are that important. Here's the first step to creating healthy boundaries in your life. The first thing I want you to do, I want you to notice the times in your life when you have not practiced using healthy boundaries and how it played itself out in your life. Maybe you were taken advantage of professionally or, or romantic partner really crossed the line with you, but you wanted to keep the peace, so you allowed that bad behavior maybe for a long time. Now it's hard to walk back from it. That, that could be possible. Or maybe a family member or a friend capitalized on your good nature to the detriment of your own needs and maybe even your own health. Maybe you're unhappy in a relationship but you didn't speak up. Go ahead and take some time, pause the video, recall those times. Maybe you're going through this right now. Maybe you're experiencing it right now. I can think of many times in my life where I did not practice using healthy boundaries. And it ended really with me feeling a lot of anger, anger towards a person, anger towards a situation that I got myself into. When that didn't need to happen, if I would have stopped it at the time, it would have been much healthier for me and them, whether the relationship continued on, it still would have been healthier. I wouldn't have had to get that to that point where I was feeling so much stress and holding on to anger in my heart about it. And I think about that. So take a moment and re recall those times and jot them down on paper. Everything belongs on paper. So how did it? Or is it creating stress or drama in your life? How did that play itself out? How, what happened as a result from that? What happened in your life? Did you stay at a job that wasn't good for you for a long time? Did you stay in a relationship that wasn't right for you for a long time? What happened? Now, I'm not asking you to do this so you beat yourself up. That is not the point. The whole point is is awareness because you can't change something without having awareness about it and that's what we're doing now awareness is incredible it's incredible in your transformation and so what you're doing is you're just recognizing what had happened where you didn't have the healthy boundary and what that caused in your life so we're just looking for the cause and effect that's it when I didn't put up that healthy boundary, I spent the next two months unhappy, or it played out into so much stress in my life, or I wore myself out so much, I got sick. Whatever it is, I want you to see. I want you to see the cause and the effect. That's gonna help you going forward and setting your healthy boundaries. Now boundaries, they are so important in creating prosperity in your life. Prosperity in your work, your relationships, everything. And when you don't set boundaries, they will be set for you and not in your favor. There's boundary violations and relationships, family, everything. But let's just talk about the workplace right now. So the best way to set your boundaries in the workplace is when you start a new position, you start working with someone for someone or someone's working for you is to set clear expectations from the very beginning. So you know what you're getting yourself into. So they know what they're getting themselves into. Ask how many hours a week do I need to work to get this job done? And if they say 120 hours of work is just constant, you just have to keep going with all these deadlines and you'll be <laughs> working a lot. Now it's up to you to then say, 
hey, you know, I can give you 65 hours of focused, productive time. But after that, I might not be as focused and it might start to affect other areas of my life. Well, it will affect my work. So set the boundary. Set the boundary of you not running personal errands for your boss, unless you don't mind that. It's up to you to set those clear boundaries. And as things come up, to also stand up for yourself. I, I had a boss and she ha had a very bullying nature and she wanted me to work after Christmas and I worked over 20 days in a row straight and she wanted me to work the entire weekend and I said to her, no, I need this weekend off. I have to have it. I need it for, for my physical, mental health. I need the time off. And she was pushing me at first and I said, no, I have to have it. And she said, okay, if you have to, you have to. So even a bully, even a bully will take a step back when you say, listen, I am putting up this boundary and it's not gonna be crossed. And you can do it in a kind way and say, listen, I'm not very comfortable with that. You also wanna set clear boundaries with the people who are working for you or with you. Get very clear the job description and what's expected of them. Don't let them figure it out or guess. Think clarity is setting boundaries. So no one has to wonder or guess. They know exactly what their job is. They know exactly what's expected. And if they're not doing that, it's easier to call them out. Don't assume anything. Don't assume that they know what the role is exactly. Get very clear. I, I want to take a, a minute to, to talk about clarity and clear communication. Clear communication is setting a boundary. It's so incredibly important because what I notice, even just in marketing my business, is if I don't get clear, then people don't know what I'm offering or what I'm trying to teach them. So I often ask myself when I write something, is this clear? How can I make it more clear? It might be clear to me because it's coming from my own intellect. But this person doesn't have all the other information why I'm saying this. So is it clear? Communication in the workplace, clear communication, and in the per interpersonal relationships is so incredibly important. It makes the difference between a success, a successful company and a failing company. And I'm gonna give you an example of that. When I first left my, my career in the jewelry industry and I was studying with to become a life coach with Mary Morrissey, I took on some part-time independent contractor positions, a couple of them. And one of them, I worked for this company who sold genetic testing. I found it incredibly fascinating, exciting, and, and really necessary and helpful to people's health. So they brought me on as an independent contractor. I did the work and they brought me on. It was a whole process to come on. And about three months later, one of the regional managers was coming down to visit doctor's offices with me. And we got in the car together and I said to him, so how bad off is the company? How much longer are they gonna survive? What is going on? And he looked at me and he said, remember I've only been there three weeks. I hadn't done that much work. I, I made calls and I've been sold selling a few things, getting it out there. And he looked at me and he said, how did you know that? How would you know that there is a problem in the company? Did someone tell you that? But no one told me anything. I'll tell you exactly how I knew. Just the onboarding of me becoming an independent contractor for them. The communication was so spotty. It was so unclear. It was so poor. It was so many different emails and texts with questions and things that should have been laid out very clearly. I knew that if this is the way their communication was within the company, that they were in big trouble because there's no way they can be productive with that kind of commu communication structure within the company. And I'll tell you about six months later, 
the company was failing and they got bought out they actually they still owe me money they didn't pay a lot of their bills they totally fell apart the man i worked for went to a different company uh, upper management within the company went somewhere else it, it completely fell apart so that is how that is that is why innately you see that and, and you know that you know that without good communication you don't have a good company you don't have a healthy company and that goes with everything so in your workplace being extremely clear can only help you and sometimes you might think I, I don't want to oversimplify it but write everything as as if they're not exactly sure what you're talking about, make it extremely clear. Because when you don't, they might even be thinking when they read it, oh, I don't wanna ask a question because maybe I should know that. And, and then it gets lost and it, you miss out so much, so many miscommunications. Miscommun Things fall through the cracks, who is doing what, it creates a lot of chaos in the workplace. It's the same at home, it's the same in your personal life. I see it all the time. You're texting friends, you're texting uh, people you're dating or your husband or your partner or your wife, and you're going back and forth and, and you're leaving things out and you're not being very clear. So there's a lot of time wasted and there's a lot more opportunity for misunderstandings. So be clear, be clear in your communications. It is setting a boundary. People often say, I want to create healthy boundaries, but I feel like I'm being mean. But the person that you're being mean to when you don't create healthy boundaries is yourself. You're being mean to yourself. When you don't take care of yourself, it hurts everyone because we're all connected and you're part of that. You're part of the workforce. You're part of the world force. And when you're not taking care of yourself, it does affect the people in your work as well. Your number one priority is to take care of your own needs so you can bring the healthiest, best, creative, most focused self to work. And you can bring your gifts and share that with your work. So wake up and claim your power. Set your boundaries. Set them at work. Set them with your family, with your community. And let me ask you, if you don't stand up for yourself, who will? If not now, when? I hope this has been helpful for you. And I'm going to do another video and we're gonna get deep into boundaries in personal relationships because it's so important for the health of your relationship, for your own well-being. It just makes so much more ease and love in your life. So stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions or comments, please, please write them in the comments or feel free to reach out to me at, at my email. I'll put a link to that. Definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And I'd love to hear what you're wanting to hear about. If you have any kind of questions or problems you want to hear about, you would like me to do a video about, feel free to send that to me. I'd love to get your, your feedback. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Sending you so much love. Take care.